morning all um, back on the boat again and what are we going to do today well um, got a couple of days of decent weather by the look of it so I'm going to start tackling the front seats in the cockpit here uh, last time I managed to do any welding as you know I did this one and this one um, so I now want to do the two front seats uh, one at a time of course I may not get them both done we'll see how we get on with that uh, but yeah first things first let's uh, get one of these seats taken apart uh, and uh, we can start work on building up the new ones in steel before I do that though I'm just going to clear this corner here uh, take the welder and the bits and pieces out of that corner uh, and remove that bulkhead so that uh, we've got access same as we have on this side we're going to have access down that side into Jack's aft cabin so just to clarify th there we're going to have a little step down and going into the aft lazarette which will be a little workshop storeroom for fenders and warps and what have you and this side will be a step down into the the quarter berth aft cabin for Jack um, there is actually room to put a quarter berth in that side as well so we may end up with a, a sort of temporary berth for guests that side but it will be mostly used for, for storage and fenders and stuff but yeah I'm just going to clear that corner then next Always the same with boats and boating and marine work. I've got this corner clear and I've got the piece of floor out, um, which is great, that's good, good progress. But I can't do the seats outside until I've got this bulkhead out. So I've had to take the floor out to get the bulkhead out. And I've noticed, oh dear, there's standing water down there, which is fresh water standing on steel in an oxygen rich environment. So, and there's another little bit there, so I need to drill we need to put some holes in these so that the, the water can't pool in places like this so that it drains into the bilge. Hopefully that won't have affected the skin of the hull too badly uh, and we'll be able to patch that up and, and um, it, you know it won't have rotted through but if it has there's going to be another patch there. But um, next job is to remove this bulkhead. Obviously I can't weld the other side of this bulkhead to the steel because uh, I'd set fire to the bulkhead and that wouldn't be good. Um, so that bit's got to come out next. Job number two of the day. Right, so we've got this all removed. That's great. We've now got access into the aft lazarettes. We're gonna put steps down here. I'll cut that fillet out there. It's not doing anything anyway. Uh, we'll have access down there for Jack's cabin. So the next order of the day is to trim out all this old angle uh, that the old seat sat on uh, and continue this seat all the way across to there. Uh, that will be a fairly mammoth job, I think, um, cutting all of that out, but uh, best get on with it, I suppose. Right, so where are we up to? There's the access now down to the aft cabins. So uh, there's gonna be obviously a step down here. Uh, and this is gonna be going straight into, into Jack's aft cabin. Need to put this seat top on next. So come outside here and I'll show you. Oh, turn the screen a bit. So yeah, just need to cut that seat top now. Uh, so I need to measure up, uh, nip down and use the plasma cutter to cut out that uh, piece of steel. Uh, you've seen me do that before, but um, you can see me do it again now.
just going to tack in place this little uh, brace to A, pull that panel back straight and B, something for the seat to sit on at this end. I'll probably put a frame here eventually as well. We'll have to just see. So here's a progress update. Um, I've already showed you this. We've got access now into Jack's half cabin. We've got to build some steps down there. Um, we've now got this seat base welded, uh, tacked in place. I'm going to tack everything in place before I actually kind of fully, fully weld it. Um, I, I prefer the MIG welder to the stick welder. I'm not brilliant with the stick welder. I can get by, uh, but I'm not fantastic. I'll just put that down so I'm not squinting. Um, but it's really handy uh, to just use the stick welder to just tack things in place without setting up the gas and everything and then once I've got it in place and I know it's going to be fine then I can go around make sure that my surface prep is good that I've V'd the angle and that I can run a nice clean weld with the MIG I know that there are lots of people out there marine fabricators who say oh no stick is the preferred arc welding is the preferred tool of choice for fabrication like this and that may well be so uh, but i also know an equal number of marine fabricators who say no that's a load of rubbish mig's fine so i don't really know all i know is welding's welding and i'm better at mig than i am at stick so i'm sticking it in for convenience but then migging it in when it's all done um, if i'm doing that grotesquely wrong please do enlighten me but from what I can tell, it's kind of a preference thing. Um, and there may be some industries where stick welding is required, but I don't think for a, a boat like this. Remember, I'm building um, a cruising yacht, not a nuclear submarine. Uh, and it's got to be good, um, but I don't want perfect to be the enemy of good. I'm not striving for perfection and, and there's no need for perfection because this isn't some, you know, military grade welding I'm doing here. I'm building a yacht that, I'm, that so long as it doesn't sink and fall apart, then that's absolutely fine. I can't stand a that'll do attitude, uh, but equally uh, you can, you can strive for, you can, you can try, you can chase perfection forever. And by no means <laughs> am I chasing perfection here, as you can see. Anyway, I'm waffling. The point is, I'm stick welding these in place and then I'm migging over them because I'm better at mig welding than I am at stick welding. My stick welding's getting better the more I do, as you'd expect. Let's crack on with this side then, eh? First of all, get that seat off. You might be able to tell those hinges were properly corroded in the other side was so bad i just gave up and just cut the flipping thing off in fact i've cut it in half i've got to get the rest off um, and even doing that has twisted the end of the impact driver getting these hinges off i'm getting more and more inclined you know to not bother with any sort of opening lids in these lazarettes because i'm going to have such good access to this this side obviously is going to be our storage for fenders warps and and lazarette things and how often do you need to go in and out the lazarette quickly you know what do you need you need mooring warps and you need fenders when you go into a marina or out of a marina or, or such like well we're planning to most of the time be at anchor when we go so if we're in and out of the marina then we'll just keep the mooring warps and the fenders keep a couple of fenders up on deck and the warps handy in a pocket and if we're going to be doing a prolonged stay in a marina then we'll get all of the fenders out um, 
but uh, I can't see any good reason, any need to have that opening hatch in the back and I'm starting to wonder about it and wonder, think that, that there might be more benefit to us as liverboards to have a cockpit with no opening hatches at all that's just completely, totally watertight so that you can fill the cockpit with water, it'll drain out the back and there's nowhere for it to get into the boat. Still undecided on that but um, it's, it's something that's playing on my mind a bit and I'm, I'm leaning more towards that at the moment because every time you put a lid like this in, however you do it, you've got hinges and you've got openings and that's A, it's somewhere for corrosion to occur and B, it's somewhere for water to get in. So, I don't know, um, let us know in the comments what you think. I'm, I'm still, I'm leaning more towards no lazarette lids at all in the cockpit, but we'll see. May as well use a partial disc. Sometimes when you get a disc down to this kind of level, it's too small to get into a small space, but it's still good for doing long straight lines, which is what we're starting with. I don't think I can get much more out of that disc, do you? Let's change it. Oh, this is turning into an absolute nightmare. So the seat on this side, the lazarette and the cockpit arrangement is constructed totally different to the one on the right side. At first glance, when you first look at them, they look pretty similar. Uh, and it's not until you start actually measuring and taking proper measurements and looking at how it's actually constructed that you realize, yeah, they're, they're constructed very differently. The lazarette on this side is much smaller than it is on that side because that side is obviously designed to be an aft cabin and this side is just designed to be storage so the construction of the seats is different the orientation to the formers and ribs is different um, so I'm having to make multiple cuts in places that I really wouldn't want to make cuts in the ideal world so I'm gonna to have to be cutting out bits to get to other bits to cut those out and then welding the first bits back in which is a complete pain in the bum um, and it's taking much longer and it's much harder work and it's going through more discs than I was going through yesterday. Uh, and because I'm going through so many discs, I'm now thinking, right, instead of just slicing through this, I might clean up uh, some of the steel and use the plasma to make some of these cuts just to save on the cutting discs. One of our patrons who's a legend sent us a whole load of these, two boxes of these, so I can clean up the paint on the lines where I want to use the plasma cutter uh, and therefore not knacker up the plasma cutter nibs too much because they're really expensive as well so thank you very much for these. <laughs> didn't want to cut out some of this but there's just no access there's just no other way to do it I've got this little bit here that I need to just nibble out I've left this bit here because this is the seats gonna go up to here so I can trim that out from the inside once the seats in uh, and I don't want to take out too much but this combing here has gone above the line of the deck so that's gonna to have to come out or at least a patch, but I'll, I'll clean, clean all that back and see how we are once we've got the seat base on. Oh dear, this side's a lot harder than the other. Oh. Right, so I don't want to cut this away. I don't want to cut this away because this is, you know, quite structural um, so I want to keep this shape because it's it kind of echoes all of the other frames of the boat so there's a limit to how much of this I want to take I think I can take a bit more but I don't want to weaken anything but the seat's gonna go here and the seat front's gonna go there so we're pretty square now Oh, we 
would you look at that the angle i cut yesterday in that piece for the other side uh, matches this side that's rather rather neat snip it off there i'm now officially down to my last cutting disc i think i've got half a cutting disc here and i've got they're no good they're useless might get a little bit out of that one that one bounced and shattered so that wasted that one but yeah this is my last cutting disc so i'm gonna have to try and be super gentle with it um you can make them last longer and i tr do try to by just the lightest pressure on the on the uh the actual cutting edge but um sometimes uh, that's it they just go clean this up now and I'm gonna actually um, spray some paint on it and then just nip off where I'm gonna tack weld it to the uh, to the bulkhead there because I want to try and get some paint coverage on the mating surfaces so obviously this is going on the the bulkhead and it's gonna weld on like this so there's gonna be a part there's gonna be no paint in the joining area so what I'm gonna do is quickly give it a dusting of, of paint with some um, some you know uh, zinc heavy paint um, then I'll just nick off where I'm gonna weld do the weld and then paint back over it and it's not ideal because I mean I can spray some oatrol oil in there as well which I probably will do but at least it means I've got some paint on the back even though the heat will burn some of it off it's better than um, it's better than having nothing on the back isn't it Holy schmoly, that's a perfect fit. And, uh, and just like that, um, uh, power's off, like that. Uh, they're doing essential maintenance in the yard, apparently, so uh, all the power's gone off, so mid-weld, I'm afraid. Everything just went, and we've got no power. Um, and I've been and asked how long it's gonna be before it's been switched back on, and they, they don't know. So um, it's a bit of a shame, because uh, I was literally in the middle of a weld, and it would have been nice to have a bit of warning that the power was gonna just abruptly go off for an indeterminable amount of time but there you go so anyway that's it uh, we're finished for today the power actually has come back on it wasn't off for very long i was just a bit frustrated but um uh, there isn't time now to get i've packed everything away and now there isn't time to get everything back out again to do more work before the end of the day so i'm going to call it a day there let me show you what i've done we've now got full length cockpit seats on this side and full length cockpit seats on this side we've chopped out the rot there there's a piece that i need to resolve and as you can see, there are patches left. I've also, because we haven't finished the transom work yet, there's gonna be a transom front on this, so it'll be a double thickness transom. Uh, and because we haven't finished that yet, I've just put a slot in the back of the cockpit so that the rainwater that does end up in here drains down onto the sugar scoop anyway. Um, and that may actually not be a bad idea to just keep that there so that when we have got this double transom box, if any water does get down inside it, it'll just drain out anyway. Um, that's if we uh, that's if we keep the transom like that and we don't put the, the transom gate in. But still undecided on that issue. Anyway, enough's enough. Um, I'm off home. I've got a little bit more tidying up to do, but you don't need to see that. So I'm going to uh, say ta-ra for now, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.
Thank you.